Morning everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today you might notice but we've got a different sewing angle for you. So I had a change around in my sewing room over the weekend and my husband is going to make me some fitted units. So I've moved around what I've got at the moment um, and hopefully those fitted units will get made sometime in the next few months. So, so watch this space because it's all changing which is quite exciting. But anyway, all that excitement aside, today I thought we'd have excitement of a different kind, and today we're going to have a work. We're going to work on Clementine's head. So Clementine the cat is this character here, and she's in book two, Luna Lapin and Friends. Um, I've chosen to make her in what's called the smoke colorway, which is not this orange felt. It's um, a dark grey because that's the colour that I preferred. But the instructions are exactly the same regardless of the colour that you choose. Um, and if you remember, I was very kindly um, gifted the, the remake kit um, by these people here. So I'll pop their names up here. And if I go and get my notes, I'll be able to read their names out for you as well. So hold on one second. So the sponsors of this video are Caroline Berman, Jackie Powell, Jan Franklin, Julianne O'Dare, Jeanette Finn, and Margaret Trow. So thank you ladies very much for your kind sponsorship of this tutorial on behalf of both me and everybody who watches this video both now and in the future. So we really appreciate your, your kindness, thank you. So we're going to get on and have a go at um, making Clementine. I've cut out my pattern pieces. I've traced those from the book. So if you're used to following me, you already know this and you can fast forward, but the pattern pieces are in the book. Um, and we trace those off using either tracing paper um, or we use baking paper. That's the other good one that to use. And if I just find a bit in the back here and we just lay the paper over the top of the pattern piece, we can see the lines through and then we can just trace that off um, and keep a note of our um, pattern pieces by writing on them. There are tutorials uh, or just tips on some of my other tutor um, videos. The, so earlier ones are going to include more detail because obviously I don't know whether this is the first video you've watched or whether you've watched several of mine. So you might already know that bit. Um, if you if you don't know how to trace or you're not comfortable doing that or confident doing it yet, just have a look back at some of my other videos, certainly the lunar ones as well. And I think I've got a a specific um, tutorial on my channel about how to trace off those pattern pieces if you want to do that so pop across and have a look at that video and that will help you the next thing that I'm going to do is talk about the felt because I'm going to be making this clementine in the smoke felt and to date I've made most of my characters in either fabric or in um, well in fabric either um, quilting cotton or in a linen a stiff linen um, and that's worked really well for me so I'm interested to see how clementine works and then if I can get her to work in a stiff fabric I think I'll have another go so so this is clementine in felt and then um, if I can make it work because I quite often I do things like that then I'll have a go at making her in fabric too so that those who haven't got access to the cool crafting felt can have a go at making her in fabric so I'd better be quiet really hadn't I otherwise if it doesn't work for me one way then I won't be able to do the tutorial in the other so I'm jinxing myself before I even start but bear with me hopefully you'll enjoy this I'll angle the camera down so you can see what I'm I'm doing and, and what I'm working on and and hopefully you'll like this new um, the camera angle. I'm going to have some of my stitching because I do cross stitch and embroidery. So I'm going to have some of my cross stitch and embroidery behind me, which should be a lot more interesting. Sort of like these pictures here. This one's not. This one here is not. That's just a painting um, that I've not done. It's a it's a print. Um, but this one was done by my daughter um, Lucinda, which I was very happy. I gifted her the kit in the first of the lockdown for the COVID pandemic, and she um, very neatly stitched it up for her, her first cross stitch project. So I was thrilled when she gifted that back to me. And then this one up here if I get my finger right is a kit not a kit a pattern that I found in Prima magazine many years ago I actually stitched that one in 1991 so that one's really quite an old one that I've got up there but I'll be putting some of my more recent stitches behind me because I just fancy having those as a better backdrop than either the dark wood that we had before or the or the white that we've got there now so bear with me it's all progress, it's all, all, all getting um, made and changed and what have you, that's what happens, is it? isn't it? Nothing stays the same, so I'll stop waffling and get on with it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the felt. I've got these 
um, pieces of felt here. I've got a little black piece in here which I've just secured onto my haberdashery that came with the kit because I don't want to lose that, that piece of little piece of black felt. So we don't need that yet, so I've popped it out of the way. The two pieces that we've got is this white piece of felt here and then the dark grey piece of felt, which is quite long. If I just move that along, you can see how long that one is. Um, and that's to do, most of the body is in um, black felt and most, not black felt, in grey felt and most of the um, head is done in the grey felt as well. Now, today I'm going to work on doing the um, head because I want to determine when I see my stitches doing round the nose so round this bit here is hand stitched and I want to see how neat my stitching is around there as to determine whether or not I end up machine stitching the the, the body um, legs and tail or whether I hand stitch it so for now I'm just going to cut out the head. So when I was making the um, felt coat for Luna from book one which one is one of my recent um, videos that I've just done I did recommend ironing the felt before we start working with it because I did feel that there could be some a little bit of shrinkage and in actual fact there was over the width there was about a um, half a centimetre of shrinkage. Now whilst that doesn't sound like a lot if you've already cut out your pattern pieces and then you press them and they shrink slightly because the characters are fairly small you're going to notice that so what i would recommend you do is just um take your felt before you start laying anything out on it or anything oh that's the um, fabric for the underneath isn't it before you start throwing um before you start laying anything out is just take that over to your ironing board and give it a good steam press um i'm going to measure this one now as well and just see if it does shrink again it, it may it may not but but again you can do the same thing with with your felt if you wanted to and because you may not be getting your felt from cool crafting again depending on the quality of the felt that you buy you may need to do that so I'm, i've noticed that on because some of these seams on the head are hand uh, are machine stitched then it sarah does sarah peel the author does say to press some of those seams so we're going to try and do that so that we don't get um problems with the with the felt stretching on us, not stretching, shrinking on us when we actually take it over to press. Just be careful when you're pressing, you might want to use a pressing cloth when you are pressing over your um, felt as well so that you don't make anything shiny. Um, and, and this silk organza pressing cloth works really well and I'm actually gonna start and sell these. So if anybody wants a silk organza press cloth, then just drop me a line and I'll, I'll talk to you about getting those to you and see if, see if any are still available. I swear by these. Um, I learned this from a trick at um, so wardrobe and um, Alison Smith, who's a who's got an actually got an MBE for her sewing, and this is what she always uses. And once I'd used it, it was fabulous, and it's um, hundred percent silk. You can see through it, so you can see where you're pressing, but it absorbs all of harshness of the heat from the bottom of the iron, so that it doesn't then make any of your fabrics shiny or um, you know or or discolors anything of there. So. It's a really good idea. Anyway, I'll digress. But I will be using that to go over my over my felt whilst I press it, just to make sure there's no damage caused to the felt from the from the warm iron. Make sure you've got it on the wall setting as well, and that'll also help. So that's what I'm on to do next. Now I'll pop back to you. Whilst I'm also over at my um, pressing station, I'm also going to pop some interfacing on the back of this um liberty of london print which is for the ears and the feet, feet pad um, you can use it without if you've not got any that's fine but it'll just give a little bit more stiffness to the ears i think i'm only going to use a lightweight interfacing um you know yes lightweight interfacing don't use a medium weight because i think that'll be too strong but that will just give that just a little bit more firmness and stability for when we're sewing with it so whilst we're at the um ironing station we might as well do that and i will again be using my press cloth for protecting this fabric and making sure that the interfacing doesn't melt and stick to the bottom of my iron um, and that's a good tip for you guys too. Okay so I've got my interface piece of the Liberty fabric here, the interfacing is just on the back, you can just see a little bit over the edge here. Just be aware that whatever fabric you choose, if it's got um, a directional print, so we can see here that on this, the strands of the vines or the for the berries are all going north to north to south. So it doesn't matter whether I wanted to have it that way, you could choose whichever way, but I feel that this goes only one way, which is this way which is this way here. So when I am putting my pattern piece on for the ears, 
If I'm cutting it out as a single, I need to do one this way. So this is the bottom of the ear and that's going towards the tip of the ear. So I need that to go that way. But if I cut out another one, I need to flip my pattern piece over and do one with this side, of the, the wrong side of the pattern piece up. That'll give me a right and a left then, a mirrored copies. If you just do one this way and one that way, you'll find you'll have wasted some of your fabric because you won't be able to use the other side of that pe pattern piece. It's called mirroring, and I've got a video on my channel about that that you can have a look at. The other way to do it is to fold your fabric in half and then to pop your pattern piece on half like that and cut it out and you will automatically get a right and a left that way. So it just, it just depends which way you're more comfortable with. Sometimes cutting it out singly, especially if it's a non-directional print, you could have cut one that way and you could twist one to go that way. So if you're using, say, a polka dot fabric that, or, or a flat coloured fabric that with no pattern at all, you can save fabric because, as you can see, I've got to cut one that way and then I've got to cut one this way and I'm going to misuse not use up that piece whereas if I had a non-directional I could have one that way and then I could have one say that way and you'd see I could put those right up against each other and it would save a bit of fabric again you might decide it's a marginal amount of fabric that's saved and whether that's worth it to you only you know um I can just tell you the tips and tricks that I know of and then you can choose which ones you want to use or not so I'm just going to pin this onto my pattern piece I'm then going to take my Frixion pen, which is a heat erasable pen, and I am going to either, well, you can either just cut straight at, straight round it, but I'm actually going to draw around my pattern piece here with my pen, because I know that this um, will be on the inside of the character when it's finished on the inside of the head. And so that's one piece there that I'm cutting out. And if I just get my scissors, so I'm just going to then, oh, being as I've drawn around it, I can take my pattern piece off, can't I? And then carefully following the lines, I can just trace, cut around those lines that I have just drawn. So now I'm going to take my pattern piece for my ear. We have one that way round, which has come from here. And so now I'm going to now flip my pattern piece over, put it right up to where we were and then pin that onto my pattern piece and either cut straight round it or you can draw around it and then cut it out afterwards. Learning to cut out accurately on the lines is a really important part of what we're doing because that will alter the size and shape of your character sometimes. So here I've not gone quite close enough to the line. So now it's separate from the main piece of fabric. I can just trim off that little bit extra just to make sure that Clementine is gonna have two equal ears. And so if I pop these on the side here, you can now see that we've got a left and a right ear. Now on the back of the pattern piece, we have got a dot and a dash or a notch. So I'm going to draw in my notch on the back here and my dot. And again on here, if I turn that piece, pattern piece over, I can still see through it. And I'm going to draw my dash here and then you can either put a pin through the dot to hold it still for you whilst you just fold it back and then where the pin goes into the fabric that's where your dot is and that helps you just mark that bit up so we've got our two ears now with the dot and the dash oops dot and the dash marked on it for you and then we're ready to cut these out in the fold so if you were cutting out the whole character together then you would cut out the feet pad as well at this stage um, but I'm not doing that just now, I'm going to do that later, so let's just get on with the um, sections for the head for now. So the only piece we're having to cut out in the white felt is actually this nose backing bit. Um, and so what we can do is just again put this right up to the edge of the felt because we don't need to leave any room around it. Because the felt doesn't fray. And I'm going to put, put mine right up into this corner. Again, you, as, you, as you know, you, you, I, I like to save as much fabric as possible. So that gives me all of this. And we've still got to do the um, tip of the tail and the tummy section, I believe, on um, Clementine. I think that's right. Um, and the rest of the body is in smoke. So there's plenty of fabric here. But again, if we save this, we can use this for a different project. So for now, we can just take our Frixion pen. 
so we can iron these, these marks off afterwards. Or you can use chalk, or you can just cut it straight out. And we're going to mark these cutting out lines. Hopefully you can see that the, the amount of waste is minimal. Right, so I'm just cutting this out nice and neat. So again, nice long cuts when you're cutting out with felt. There's no right way and wrong way with felt, but you might prefer one side of the felt to the other. So I will show you how to mark your pattern pieces so that you can tell. So when we were cutting out the Liberty, it's a clear right side and wrong side because the fabric's only printed on onto one side of the felt, um, on the one side of the fabric. But on um, felt, then there is no necessarily a right way or a wrong way to the felt, but you might prefer one side to another as I did with the jacket now I'm just going to put that wool coat as I got just going to put a pattern piece on there and put a pin on it so I remember what that piece is we have got some little snips here that we need to make as well so we're going to look at those when it comes to it so just pop that to one side and so that's all we've used so I've had a look at this felt and I think that there is I prefer the slightly mottled side of it for my character rather than this flatter side but you just have to have a look and just see which side um, appeals to you the most and then we're going to have a look at our pattern pieces. Now, this is the back of the head, and that's cut on one on a fold, because we've got this um, double-ended um, symbol here, which means that it needs to be cut on a fold. So we know at some stage our fabric will have to be folded over so that we can do that piece and cut that piece out on a folded piece of fabric. And um, the ear we've already done. That's so that pattern piece. Let's just put that onto there. So I remember that's that pieces, those pieces. Does help just to keep things all nice and tidy and keep yourself organised. And then we've got the side head which needs cutting out and the upper head which needs cutting out as well. So let's have a look and see what we can do with this. So I might just cut out the back head on the fold because that's the only piece that needs to be cut out on a fold. And then I'm going to open my felt up and cut out the rest as it is. Let me just pin this pattern piece onto the felt. The top and bottom first. I'm going to have a couple of the side here around the back of the head. And then we can then just cut this straight out as it is now. Now there is a cutting out, there is a pinning diagram in the book if you want to follow that as well. And that will also show you how best to get all of your character pieces out of your piece of felt that's been supplied with your kit. So that's the back of the head. We've got um, a couple of notches where the triangles are. So I'm going to just put my little notches in and then she says to do them really tiny. So I'm going to do those really small. And I'm just going to put one in the centre top as well, at the top there. Okay, happy with that. Put that to one side. Okay, so when we're putting out next bits, really, we need to just work out what we can in order to get these cut out as economically as possible. Let's save that for a moment. That works quite well, doesn't it? Move this one right down here. So using the edge of the fabric to cut this out. So when you were, when you um, cutting out onto felt, you don't have to worry about the direction. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I go on quite a lot about grain of fabric and not cutting against the grain of the fabric. Um, so if it's on needs to be straight of grain, we don't cut on the diagonal. But on these pattern with felt, there is no grain of fabric, so it's just a free for all. Really, you can just pop, pop your pattern pieces on whichever way suits you best. So let's pop these on here, and then this one here, I'm going to just we'll just tuck in there just quite nicely, just for me to cut out there and not waste as very much fabric at all. And all these little pieces here I will save because I do something called wool applique as well. So this fabric is perfect for that. So I will save those little offcuts for little details on that type of stitch. And if you want to have a look and see what that's all about, then I have got a video on my channel where I make 
a pattern by um, Lisa Bonjean of um, Primitive Gatherings. She does a Lovebirds quilt, a Lovebirds cushion, and I've done that already. So you can have a look and see what was involved in that if you wish to. So I'm just going to snip carefully and as smoothly as I can do. Sometimes you can't go too, too smoothly around these pattern pieces. I always tidy it up a little bit later, but we'll just try and do it right first time if we can. Very careful not to shave anything off the pattern, because otherwise we'll be making the pattern smaller and smaller each time we use it. So that's that one piece. We need to cut another one of those out, but for now that will do. Sometimes cutting out on a single means that you can actually get more pieces, but it is easier to forget your pieces. So make sure before you finish off cutting out that you make sure you've got all of your, your pieces that you need. You've got, because you'll need four of the arms, won't you? Four cut out pieces of your arms. And if you're only using one side of the felt, just remember to make sure that they you've got your mirrored copies of your arms and your legs. If you're happy to interchange the felt either way, then you don't need to worry. But I think there is a difference on this this I show you that there's a difference between that one to this one so I'm going to use this side for my my felting for my character so as I say I'm going to save all the I don't save little bits like that so let's now do the other side of Clementine's head so again to get this right I'm going to mirror a copy as well so that's the right side, that's the wrong side. So I'm going to put a pin in the right side of Clementine's face that I want to use so that I remember that. <clears throat> and now I'm going to mirror a piece and I can just tuck that piece in right in just there, look. Ooh, that's, that works nicely for me. So again, let's just pin this in. And this piece has been turned upside down, as you can see, so it's going to be a mirrored copy. If you have a look at your felt and you genuinely can't tell the difference between one side and the other, then you can just cut two straight out the same way. But as I say, sometimes, and in this case, I think you can tell a difference. So I'm just going to cut this one out now. So the first thing we're going to sew are the two ear pieces. So if we take the pattern piece out and we open those out so that we've got a right and a left, and I'm presuming that this long section here is for the bottom but it doesn't matter at this stage and then we've got the other two pieces exactly the same and what we're going to do now is we are going to now put them right sides together so i'm going to turn this one over and fit it on top of this one here just put a pin in just hold those together and then take that one over the right way over that side and put that right side together. As you can see having the pins in there just to reaffirm which is the right side and the wrong side of your felt takes away a lot of the guesswork for how you're actually going to sew these when it comes to sewing them together. Just make sure your edges are to are right. And put a pin in the middle just so that we can sew. And we're going to sew these up with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that's where we, that's what we use on here. So just a quarter of an inch, and we're going to go all the way around that curved edge and all the way back down this curved edge. Remember to use your um, pivot technique where you leave your needle in the work as you're stitching and your fabric and then you can lift your presser foot and then manipulate yourself around this curve and that's what I'm going to do now so I can show you how to do that put that piece out of the way because we need that to be kept nice and safe and I'm using a straight stitch here and I'm using a 2.2 stitch length so that we've got that um, nice construction um, weight. And I've also got the um, thread in my machine in the top and the bobbin as well that was given with the kit, um, but basically just one that coordinates with your, with your fabric. So I'm gonna start at this edge here. I know where my quarter of an inch mark is, so I know where I can sew to. And I'm gonna sew and reverse at the bottom and then just gradually start to use this now and put my needle down into my work and then I can lift my presser foot up just to help it go around the curves so nice and steady 
I'm just putting some pressure on the side here to help it curve round. But if it starts to bunch up, then I shall stop, lift up my presser foot, and as you can see, I can move my, my stitching round just to change the direction. We don't chain, don't sew over our pins. So when I get close to that, so you see the position, I've positioned it so it's out of the way. And now we're at the tip of the ear, I'm just gonna lift up my presser foot and turn round. Now I can see I can probably do one more stitch where I was before I'm then onto my quarter of an inch for coming down the other side. Nice and steady. Try not to push and pull your fabric too much. Use that pivot technique just to make sure you can keep things nice and straight and smooth. You're better off to pivot and once or twice than you are to try and pull it out of shape. And when we get to the bottom here, we're just going to reverse just to hold a few stitches in place. And then I can use my snips to take those threads off at the start and at the end. And if we snip our threads as we go along, a little bit longer there, then we can actually um, keep things neat as we're working. So there we go, one nicely stitched ear there. Now I have noticed I've got the snips on here, marks on here, so I am going to snip that, but I'm going to leave the um, little dot there. We might put a potatoes tack in that yet, just to mark that. I'll see what it says in the instructions next. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and sew the other one. And if you need to see it being sewn again, then just um, pop the video back and you'll see exactly what I'm going to do exactly the same again. Now, the other thing I'm going to do with my um, ears is I'm going to just um, use my pinking shears on these edges because whenever we've got a curved seam, if we want it to sit flat when we're, when we're sewing it uh, or when we're turning it through, then we need to just trim these edges off. We either, if it's um, the other way around, we have to just put snips in and you'll have heard me saying put snips in up to the stitches but not through them and that enables um, a seam to um, open out on an edge. But in this case, because this edge here is smaller than this edge here, we actually need to take little triangles out like this. So let me just show you, they're really small and tiny, but these will make all the difference when you come to turning your pattern piece out. Now you can go round and just do these little snips up to a couple of threads away, width away from the curved from the stitch seam that you've just done you don't want to go through your stitches if you do you have to just go back and restitch that or the other quicker way that you can do this is with pinking shears and so pinking shears are these they've already got the triangles cut into the blades for you and what you can do is just position that on your fabric and then you can just snip around like that and it just does this serrated edge for you really don't go through your stitches you need to just go really close to them, but not through. It also helps reduce some bulk in that seam as well. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the top of the um, point and the little top of the triangle either side, because I that'll be a really congested area and I don't want Clementine to have pointy ears at the top where everything's gone, or bulky ears at the top where everything's gone really tight. So let me just snip this one off here. And again here can see this, the um, pink and shears are quicker, but if you've not got them, then the other way of doing it will work really well. And again, I'm just trimming these edges off. Now you've got to be careful when you're turning these through because you're gonna want a little point on the edge of your um, ear, but if you're too too firm with point pushing it out, you're actually gonna pull those fibers through and we don't want to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is just take my fingers and just turn this through gently. Just push that little bit up inside. And then you can either use a pin, I'm going to use a pin just to ease mine out, or you can use a knitting needle um, or something that you might have a point, a turning tool as well that you can use. But either of these things work well. And literally you're just pulling out the, the felt from the fabric, just gently easing it out. Don't go yanking at it because it will, will cause you problems. And you're just turning those ears out until they're all nicely turned through. It's got the little point to do, so I've got to be super careful there. And then I like to just finger press these so that you've actually got the stitching stitches stitched edge right up to the edge of your fabric. And the heat of your fingers will help you just achieve that. 
So there we've got one very nice little ear already. Nice edge there. Just see if I can just pull that little bit out just a little bit more. As I say, I've got to just be really careful. Because ears are really noticeable, aren't they, on the cat? So you need to be. Okay, so that's one. Let's just do the other one. Exactly the same way. Pull the sides apart at the bottom and just push that through. Push your finger up inside, make sure that's all gone nicely. And then just using the pin or your, or your knitting needle, you can just turn this through. Same for both ones, both sides you don't need to see, but at the end of it, what you want is you want two mirrored copies of the finished ear so that you're going to have one one side of the head and one the other. And again, we can just roll that seam between our fingers, make sure that we're nicely on the edge. And again, this side here, just press against that seam and that should give you a nice edge. And those have cut, turned around nicely with no bulk in those edges as well. So we've got one left and one right ear. As you can see, I've turned them that way as well. You might be able to see one left and one right. So that's all good. OK, let's get on to the next stage. Before I move on to the next stage, um, Sarah has said in the book that we do need to just press these flat um, with a warm iron. So I'm going to go and do that because I know that that will help everything lie flat as well. So I'm just going to do that before I move on to the next stage. Okay, so I've got my two ears all nicely pressed. And the pieces that I've now got out is I've got the side front head, um, the side front, and I've also got the upper front head. And this is going to sit in between the sections here, and then the other side front's going to go here. And the ears sit in between this section here, and then this section here. So what we need to do now is to make sure we've got all of our notches marked. So you should have a notch on the side there and another one here on the side front. And then we've got two tailor's tacks to mark as well on here. So I've got a contrast thread in my um, needle and we're going to make a tailor's tack. If you've already done tailor's tacks before, then you can move on. Just make sure you've got the two on the side front and you've got one, two, three, four on the upper front. So make sure you've got those before you move on. But if, if, if you've not done tailor's tacks before, then all we do is take a contrast thread in a needle, hand sewing needle. I've got both pieces of my felt together and I've got those right sides together so they're fitting nicely on, on with the pattern piece. And what we do is we take a stitch and we go from one side to the other. So in this case, I'm going east to west or west to east, whichever way you want to. And we leave a tail. We then go north to south over that same dot so that the centre of the stitch is actually right on that dot and we leave a loop. And then what we do is we get our snips and we snip through the loop and we snip off our threads leaving a tail. We're going to do that on the bottom one. I think I've just about got enough thread just to do that. So again, in, spanning across that little loop. The, the felt's quite, felt is quite thick so just to make sure you're going right the way through because you need it on both pieces and then again the other opposite direction and you leave a loop and then you cut your needle off as well just through the threads on your needle so we've got these long tufty bits of thread that's called a tailor's tack and if you look on the back you can just see the pink thread poking through so that it's marking both sides what we do then is take our pins out of our pattern piece and we can lift that off. Just hold on to the threads if you need to, just to ease those off. Put that safely to some one side. And then what we do is we ease the two pattern pieces apart from each other to make a bridge of threads, not pulling all the way through because we want to keep this on one side. And then we snip through that bridge of threads. And what that does is it's marked that dot position now on both of our pieces of fabric. Another one down here, got to be careful with this one because we've not only got shorter threads, just because I was using what I got left on my on my needle. So bridge of threads and then snip through. And that leaves that contrast felt. So when we look at these two now with our right sides up, got our pins marking our right sides together, we've got a mark here and again here on this piece. Now on this piece here, we actually need to make four different tailor's tacks. And we need to make sure that we've got these two notches here marked as well in our, th in our felt. And I've got those snipped, snipped out. So let me just thread my needle again. Get some more thread. 
nice and quickly for you. Oh, you watch me struggle to thread it now that I've said that. <laughs> there we go. Ends together. There's no knot in the end. You don't need a knot in the end on Taylor's tacks. And again, we're just going to do those those little stitches across to mark these edges here. And these are these are clues as to how we're putting our pattern pieces together. These ones don't need to have quite so long a thread because they're going to be marked. They're just going through one one amount of of felt so that's fine it just helps transfer those markings onto your pattern pieces so I'm going to do these last two now and I'm also going to make sure you've got the net notch at the center front here and then the notch on the sides here okay because they're important as well for our clues to how to match things up oh, let me just do those other two tailors tags so I'm just going to do these other two tailors tags exactly the same way as this and then we'll talk about matching all of this up together Okay, so when we've got that together, we can just take the pattern piece off there. We've got all four of those marked. And we're just going to put the pattern piece out of the way and leave that centre front piece out of the way. Oh no, that's the piece we're going to work on first, isn't it? So we're going to work on this piece first here. So just move your threads out of the way. So we've got the right side up of our, of our fabric piece and we've got our ears with the printed side up. And what we're going to do is we're going to locate on this side curve here, the little tailor's tack. And we're going to put the shorter edge of the ear. So if you look on there, we've got a long edge and a short edge. Oops, I'll put it there for you can see. A short edge and a long edge. And the short edge, the end of the short edge, matches up with the edge of the, um, with that notch on one side. And then it's obviously going to go off the edge of your fabric here. So the edge of the ear matches up with the notch there. And then what we're going to do then is we need some more thread. Always needing more thread, aren't I? I should be all ready for you. Okay, I've not put a knot in, an edge. So we're going to go from the dot on the ear and the tailor's tack under there. So you can see that just goes right the way through to the same point. So the tailor's tack dot on there would match up with the tailor's tack the, on the ear here, look, at the edge of the notch. There's a little mark for a tailor's tack, which I've not put on. So if you want to put that on, you can do so you can match them all up together. Um, I just know it's at the top of the notch, so I'm just using that as my placement. And then what I'm going to do is just tack in this down. I've not got an, a knot on my edge. I'm just going to do a double stitch where I start off to hold that together. I've got a little extra on my thread. And then a couple of stitches down to where that notch and the edge of the ear are together. Meeting that up a little bit. And then I'm just going to take a stitch off the edge of the ear just to hold that down. And then I'm just going to make that into a double stitch. So again, I'm just going to go over that again just to hold that down. And then cut my threads. So this isn't a contrast thread, this is just tacking just to hold that down. So now we've got that down, we can hold the pin. So as you can see, that ear's attached on there, and that's going to give us that side bit of that ear, because this is the centre bit that goes down the nose of the face. Okay, so it's just halfway sewn, just so there's a surplus of felt here of the headpiece. And then, so the, the, the top of the notch dot is on the top of the dot at the top there, and the ear's just sewn between those points there. Let's do the other side. So get your ear, here's the longer part of the ear and that's going to be off the edge of the face if you like. And at the top of the notch there would be a dot and that dot's going to sit right on top of the tailor's tack that we've just done at the top of the head. And the edge of the ear should end at the notch on the side of the front. Pop a pin in just to hold that steady for us. And then again, but I'm going to start from this edge down here this time. Make sure your edges of your felt are lined up. Okay, so I'm going to take a stitch here to hold that edge of that ear down. Leave a tail on your threads. And just do a double stitch. Just stops the ear from flicking over if, if ever you needed to, to sew it. Oh, it's got caught underneath there. And then I'm going to sew towards the top of that notch. 
just it's only a couple of stitches it's a short short space but it's just going to just help you keep that in place and then I'm just going to do a double double stitch there as well to hold that in place and then snip my threads so this is what we look what we've got so we've got the so the ear actual bit is is um loose we've got our tacking stitches on both sides this is the bottom end of the nose and if I turn it over for you you can see that the ears are going off the edge of the curve of the top of the head here let's lay that down back on our work surface okay let's now we're going to be working with the two side pieces now I've got these let's orientate ourselves we know from the pattern piece that the eye sits just here and we know from here that's where that section is there so the eye is going to go on here now if you struggle you could always sew the eye white bit on now if you wanted to if you're happy with that placement I'm going to wait until mine's stitched on because I think I'll be able to adjust it better that way um, but you could if you wanted to there's also this like flat section here and that's actually part of Clementine's nose so keep that in mind at this point here is the part of her nose because that's going to help you when you put this jigsaw together so put the pattern piece out of the way we've got our right sides up because it's marked by our pin and what we're going to do now is use these two tailor's tacks here to match up with the tailor's tack at the top of the notch on the ear and the one down towards the bottom of the center front of the nose so let's take this piece here let's flick it over and let's first mark up this tailor's tack at the bottom here and we do that by putting a pin through the centre of one tailor's tack and that should go through the centre on the other. So we're just going to put a pin in just there to hold that anchor together. And the, the actually the edges of the centre front of the nose are together. The next thing we're going to do is locate the tailor's tack at the top of this curve. And then we're going to make sure that that matches with the tailor's tack at the top of the ear and then match those edges together. And we can just match those up together and just put a pin in to hold that together. Now, what you're going to notice is that this edge here is longer than the edge at the bottom. Can you see there's a bit of a gap there? If I hold it that way, you can perhaps see it better if I hold pull it too. And what that means is that this is what's gonna give us the curve. It's, it's a, what's called a princess seam. And what we have to do is we have to smoosh the fibers in the face down a little bit because they've got to be flattened to meet up with the edge and the length of this side here so let's just go into the middle after we smooch those fibers down and put a pin and you can see that this there's a little bit extra here and then there's a little bit extra there that's not too bad so again we're going to go into the middle again and smooch those fibers down and put that together and then the two notches that were on the top of the head here should match as well so that all of that curviness, if you like, is going down onto the centre front of this of the nose. I might just move that one just slightly. Make sure your raw edges of your felt are together. We will do this again on the other side and I'll have you watching me do that again so that we know where we are. So that's what you should end up with. So we've got ears sticking out at the edge here and the, the tailor's tacks on both of those seams are matching on both sides so that's our reference point I'm just going to take the center pin out here because I now know that that's the right side of my um, face piece so I'm not going to worry about that now let me move these things out of the way keep our other pattern piece still and we're sewing this but from this tailor's tack here to that tailor's tack there with a one centimeter seam allowance which is bigger than we normally stitch we normally stitch with quarter of an inch but this time we're actually stitching with a centimeter so just bear that in mind get you positioned so you can see my sewing machine so we're going to locate where that point is there on the on the tailor's tack and we're going to do our sewing so we're going to, oh, got a pin there. Let's move the pin out of the way because now we've got it sorted and put our needle in so to anchors our work. Couple of stitches forward, couple of stitches back, but don't go past your tailor's tack. And then you're going to sew this edge here at the one centimetre seam allowance. We don't sew over our pins. And we're going to sew till we get to this tailor's tack here and then stop. Okay. 
catching that edge of that ear in. So just to reverse, and there we go, and just reverse a couple of stitches to hold that still. Let's take our stitching out, cut our threads and our star to end threads, neaten those off as we go. This is what we've got. So we've got the curve of Clementine's face starting to come and her ear is starting to be caught into that seam just there. Okay, so now let's do the same on the other side. So we could press this one open, couldn't we, I suppose? But Sarah tells us to do that in the book. So you just finger press it for now. Just open the seams out and just put pressure on with your fingers. And then we're going to get our other piece, a pattern piece, with our tailor's tack and our right side up. And we're going to flick that over so it's right side together on our stitching. And I'm going to use that pin. I don't need that anymore because I know it's right side together. Go through the centre of this tailor's tack here. And I'm going through the notch at the top of the ear and through to the tailor's tack on the other side of the ear. And once I've got those lined up and the raw edges lined up together... Then I'm going to put that pin in to hold that steady. Okay, now I'm going to go down to the bottom here, to the bottom of the nose. And we've got a tailor's tack here, so pin goes through the centre of that tailor's tack and through the centre of the tailor's tack at the bottom here. And then we can just push those bits of felt together and that should line up. And then we're going to just mark the centre of that tailor's tack with, a, with our pin. And again, we've got these two edges here. So we're going to match the notch at the bottom of the ears together first. Make sure those match. I'll put a pin just there. And then we're then going to smoosh these fibres down so that they match nicely with each other and make a nice edge. So you might have to sometimes just pull through from the other side just to make this sit quite nicely. But it will do, it's just a, just a princess seam. So just use the heat of your fingers to move it down and you can see that those are now sitting fairly nice and flat. And then I put a pin in the middle first and then I'll put a pin either side just to hold those edges together because they can move if you're when you're under the sewing machine. They, they don't always want to curve the way you want them to. And we need this to curve because this is going to give us the shape to Clementine's face one side is slightly longer than the other so when we open this out we can see we're going to have this as the cheek and eye area and that's this forehead going down to the nose like you see on a cat so now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew from the center of this tailor's tack down to the center of this one again with a one centimeter seam allowance so let's just go ahead and do that i'm just using a straight 2.2 construction stitch Hold on to your thread so you don't get a nest. And I've got to put my needle in my work and then I take out this first pin out of the way. And a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, and the needle's in the work and now we can start and sew along here. So let's just keep that one centimetre so both sides of Clementine's face are the same. Go down to the next pin and take the next pin out. Just make sure everything's all nice and flat underneath. Throw the pin out and then down to this next tailor's tack. Take that pin out, that's it. And then when we're on top of that tailor's tack, just do a couple of reverse stitches just to hold that together. Needle out of the work, snip our threads. And remove the machine and show you what you should be left with. So, when we open this out, we've got this kind of circular shape here that we're working with. And we've got it open at the top just here by about a centimetre or so, haven't we? And then again at the top of the ear. So the, so the ear is actually loose at the top here, look. So the ear is loose and those two ends of the felt are not sewn down either. They're, they're still open. And that's the same at the top of each ear. And then down here at the nose again, 
you've got an open section there and an open section here at the bottom on those tailor's tacks. But we're getting a nice curve to Clementine's face here. So the next stage then that we're going to do, I think, is attach the back. Let me just check in the book and make sure that's the next stage that we're going to do. OK, so I've just got Clementine, the back of Clementine's head out and we've got a dart here that we need to sew and you might not have sewn a dart before so what we're going to do is we're going to just mark the bottom of the dart with a little snip on the pattern well on the pattern on the felt and then if we just put those two edges of the neck together we can find the bottom of that dart and just make sure that we've popped that snip mark onto both sides so we've got both sides of the dart at the bottom marked and now if we open this out we're going to do a tailor's tack and what we're going to do is going to take this tack at the top of this dart here. So where that um, dotted line goes off the edge of the off the edge of the pattern, we're just going to just mark it with a tailor's tack here, just so that we know where we are. Oops, got caught around my pattern. There we go. And because it's just a little one, we we don't need to have a lot of threads um, here. I'm just going to snip through the loop, but we don't really need to. So I'm going through one layer of um, felt. Let's take the pattern piece off. The other thing that I have made sure that I've done is mark the notch here, the notch here, and the notch at the centre back. So you've got those three notches to mark, and I've done that with mine already. So there's one just there, one just there, one just there. So that's going around the outside, and they're going to help us match up these sections. We've got our centre first there. So the first thing we're going to do is take the right side of our felt and we're going to fold it so that right sides are together and then match these neck edges up together and then we can see the edge of our tailor's tack just there. So I'm just going to use a pin here just to the side just to hold this together for me. Oh, if your pins don't go through just give them a twist and they should go through. And then what we do is we sew from the notch so we put the notches together on the neck edge and we sew from that to the point that we've got marked with our tailor's tack and we sew across. We don't reverse stitch at the back here. I'll show you what we do at the end of the tack of the um at the end of the dart here. If you've got a machine that cuts the threads for you, you might need to just leave a tail and not use that function at this moment because you need to tie a knot in those tails. So let's do this first. So again, it's just on a 2.2 construction stitch. And we're going from those notches there towards the dot here. So I'm going to reverse back at the, at the neck edge slightly and then aim your middle of your presser foot towards that dot, tailor's tack, and I want you to just sew off the edge so that you can have a tail. Leave a little bit of a tail because we want to sew those together. On the neck edge you can snip your threads off but don't snip the threads on this tail bit here because what we want to do is we want to separate those and then we're going to tie three knots in that. So we're going to do one. It doesn't have to be too tight, but it's just so that it doesn't come across. And this is the way that you deal with all um, darts, whether it's on dressmaking or whether it's on toy making. I always do this with all of mine that's all together and then when you're ready then you leave have a little tail so leave about a centimeter of thread on the bottom there and just snip it off and now because we've finished with that tailor's tack we can take our pin out and then we can then take out these threads here that were marking the back there and can you see that's just given that that fabric a bit of a conical shape a bit of a curve let's check and see what we need to do with that if anything no right okay so that's fine so what we're going to do next is if you take this over to your sewing machine and we're just going to press these seams open not to your sewing machine to your ironing board and press these seams open because that's what we need to do next in order to reduce down on any ball right. so the top of the head you're pressing open here the bottom here you're just leaving those just so that those are attached on the bottom there. So don't trim those off. Let me just take that over to the ironing board and just get that pressed open and you'll see how much flatter that'll stay. If you have got a tailor's ham, 
or a rolled up towel that you can press this over because you, you're going to struggle to press this flat um, because what we want looking for is we're looking for this curve in Clementine's head so that it sits nicely um, and so you'll need a tailor's hand. Let me just get mine and I'll show you what one looks like. Hold on. Okay, so this is a tailor's ham here. You can get them off eBay or Amazon, that's just a pressing tool. What we're going to do is take our character, and because this has got a curved edge, we can use the curved edge in order to place our pattern piece on to press, and it won't press it flat as if you were working just on the edge of the um, ironing board. You can also take a piece like this and press it open like that as well. So let me use a piece of press cloth over the top so we don't damage the felt and then I can then use my iron mochi fingers to just press that down. If you've got steam in your iron you can give it a blast of steam but just be careful as I say I'm trying to do it's left handed and just be careful not to steam your hands. And if you look at the two sides there you can see how much flatter this one is, is sitting now now it's been pressed. Just remember to keep that section there at the bottom towards the nose. That needs to be pressed over. Just open this one up. Pressing cloth over the top. I can see that to see where I'm going. So I'm pressing it all open and flat first, just so that I can work that. And then I'm just going back in again at the end and just pressing that little bit over towards the nose. Side of the desk. Okay, so we've got the centre of the back here and we've got the knot the notch sewn in here and we've got our seams pressed open for the majority of the head apart from at the nose where they're pressed in over on top of themselves still double. I've read the instructions for how to sew the next bit which Sarah says to pop this section on and to sew round the neck edge all the way round. She doesn't say what to do with the ears so I'm going to add an extra step in for everybody and that is what we're going to do now is we're going to pivot this edge of this ear around to mirror the edge of the side seam of the head. So I don't know whether this is going to be easy or not for you to see but we've got the ear bit that's sticking out at the moment and this edge here has got to lie across this edge here. So all I'm doing is just using my finger to move that seam allowance there out of the way. And then we're going to just move that along so that the ear lies across the back there. And what I'm gonna do now is gonna tack it. So I'm going to move the seam allowance out of the way. So I'm really going from the point, um, from the tailor's tack point that we sewed up to previously. And I'm just go, just joining again my threads. I want to do the other side as well so I can show you again. Because I think this is one of the most confusing parts. And we're just going to ignore this pink thread. Because I should have done my tailor's tacks perhaps in a different thread to the tacking thread. Sorry. Didn't think about that before. But just make sure that as you're sewing along here, the edge of the ear is matching the curve. Because here this bit's here sticking out a little bit. I'm gonna just tuck that so that it goes around the edge and your ear's going to just poke out at the back a little bit and take on a bit of a curve. And we want a curvy ear on our Clementine because that's what cat's ears are like, isn't it? I'm going to go down to the bottom here and we're going to do an extra stitch at the bottom to hold that section down. So this, this isn't in the book, this is an extra step that I'm just popping in, folks, just to try and help you. So if we look from the other side, we can see that when we sew down this edge here, we need the ear to be sticking up like that. And so what I'm doing is I'm tacking this down in advance of sewing the back seam together, because the next stage we're going to go is seam sew around here with the back on. And I think that at the moment, I mean, Sarah doesn't say what to do with the ears, but that's what I think that we should be doing is so we should be folding the ear back. So let me just show you again. So we've got on this side, so we've got the ear here with the curvy edge and that's the outside sewn edge of the ear. And on this raw edge here, 
where that point is. We're lifting the seam allowance forward and then we're just folding the ear back so that it matches along that curved edge. I don't know if you can see that enough or not. Hopefully that's all making sense. And then I'm going to sew from, the ear doesn't go down as far as the notch, so you can't match that up. I'm just going to sew an extra couple of stitches here with my tacking thread. And then just tacking those raw edges together, just so that they'll stay steady for me without me having to do too much more. And I'll show you how to get these tacking threads out later so that you don't, we don't spoil anything and so we can hold it all together. So I've got this seam allowance folded in and I'm just going to tack into that corner there. We'll see how this works out. But if anybody struggled with this section, that's why Sarah doesn't actually say what to do with the ears in this part in the book. Not in my version anyway. So we've got extra tacking along the back here. This bit here is free of any tacking. And what we're going to do now is take the right side, so the dart's been stitched on the wrong side, the right side of the back of the head and the right side of the front of the head together. And then wherever you're comfortable working from first, we're going to match that neck edge just there and put a pin in, putting it at right angles to the neck edge. And then we're going to find our notches on the sides and match those up together because that's a match point for us. And then we're going to find and going to push the ears inside and find the notch on the centre of the top of the head and match that together and pop a little stitch in, a little stitch, a little pin, and again tuck that ear inside and then we're going to then match up the side seams, notches on the side seam and put a pin in and then that should take us back down to the neck edge again where we can put another pin in to hold that. Now once we've got those, we know we've got those match points in together, we can fill in the gaps with more pins and all of these raw edges, all the way around the edges, need to be the same. So they all need to match up nicely. She says, it's easy, she says. Everybody's screaming at the camera. I'm not sure what you're doing, Claire. Okay. So, that's what it should look like which is a bit confusing, isn't it? So we've got the, the this is the back, back side. The back side of it, the back of the head, should all be pretty much flat apart from this point here, which is a bit of a cone shape. But that notch there should be on the top of the seam there for the ear. So we can put a pin in just there to hold that. Those raw edges there need to go together. Pin in there. So it's going to be pin central, I'm afraid, but rather than... London Central Station, it's pin central. And we are sewing with a one in with a one centimetre seam allowance, so it is going to mean that it does pull in. But you've got to be careful when you're sewing this, you've got to be keep tucking the ears out of the way because it's going to be so easy to catch those. And I'm going to give you a little tip as to when we're sewing this, how we're going to sew it to make sure that where possible we miss all of those ears. So let's just keep going round with our seam allowances and our pins and our edges of our fabrics together. It's a bit like sewing the foot padding, isn't it? Where it's on the on the circular section. So one in just there and then one in just to here. So you can see how many pins I've used. If, it, if you use too many more, you're going to not know where you are. But this is where it's going to be essential to put your needle in your work for doing that pivoting. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Hopefully that's all made sense. Let's go for it and see how we get on. So let's have a go at doing this with our machine. So I'm going to start at this neck edge here. I'm leaving this, this section here is open. I'm going to start at this edge here and go round here, all the way around here. I'm going to come to here, holding the um, 
seam allowance out of the way and I'm going to stop there and reverse sew. So that's the, where the center front, center, side front seam is. I'm going to stop there and do a back tack and then I'm going to stop my threads, lift all of this over to the other side, make sure my ear is tucked right down and then I'm going to start sewing again around to there, stop there with a the reverse and then join again here and then come down the other side of the neck. So let's do just that. And this is with a one centimetre seam allowance. So let's just start and stop at the beginning of the neck first. A couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is put my needle into my work. So my needle's anchoring that piece and it can't go anywhere now, it's, it's restrained. So let's go up a little bit for the centre of the neck until we've got to our point. Let's take our pins out as we go. And we can make sure that we've got that one centimetre seam allowance before we start to turn because the needle is held holding our work in place so we can spin this as a pivot. And then we're going to start and follow the outside edge of this head now. And when I get close to my pins, I'm going to take those out. Don't sew over pins. You can mess your machine up. And then take out this pin here. And we're getting towards our tacking thread. So we know the ear is coming, so we know it's going to be a bit bulky there. And we're going to fold the seam allowance so it's flat, not so that it's open, so that it's flat. And I'm going to sew right into the centre of where these dots are here. So we're going over the edge of the ear. Just be aware, you can hear my machine struggling as it goes onto that section. And we're going to go forward towards this centre, still keeping that one centimetre seam allowance. When we get there, we're going to just do a couple of stitches and reverse. And then I'm going to take my needle out and then take it out of the machine. So let me show you. So there we've got it sewing up on the neck edge, up to this point here. And then we're going round the outside here, and this is all with one centimetre seam allowance, nice and easy. Now what we're going to do is put our seam allowance the other side, and I'm going to rejoin now at the dot point here. And the idea is that you have the minimal amount of gap between your ears here. We can, we can tidy that up with a few hand stitches if we need to at the end. So fold your seam allowance for, your, for the side of the nose over. It's at the top of the head though, isn't it, really? But you know, it's the centre for centre bit that goes down to the nose. Hold on to your threads and you can put your needle into the work. And then at one centimetre still, oh, take my pin out, don't want to sew over that. And then reverse back to where we were starting. And now we're just going to go round and we just need to make sure that the ears are staying out of the way. And if you need to, lift your presser foot up so that you can reach inside and grab your ear if you need to and just make sure that that's out of the way of the stitching and then press the foot down again and start sewing. And take the pin out, it's buried in the felt. And then fold this seam allowance flat so we can get right up close to it and we're going to stop on that tailor's tack again and reverse take the slits off I'm just going to feel with my fingers okay so far so good and then we're going to fold the seam allowance back again out of the way before then, we then join and then do a few stitches and back. Still on this one centimetre seam allowance. I've not put my needle in my work, look, it's not following my own advice. And then round. just check that we've got one centimetre down there and we have, so that's fine. So I'm using the edge of my foot for a guide and I'm going to sew down to here 
and then reverse just to tidy that up. Okay, and snip that off and snip those starting threads off. Okay, start and snip those neck edges off. Let's have a little look and see how we've done. Fingers crossed. So we've sewn all the way around the outside here and hopefully we've caught down the sections of the ears as well that we needed to. So let's have a little quick peek and see how we're looking. Just be careful with your felt because it will stretch if you're not careful. And let's have a little look and see. Pull out her ears. Oh, so far so good. There's the top of the head. There's the side of her head. And we've got ears that are sticking up. So I think we've done quite well with that. And then of course the face is going to take on some more shape when we do some more stitching. But what I wanted to make sure was that we'd we'd actually caught these sections here of the ears correctly and that we'd got these sticking up ears and that we'd not got a piece of ear flapping around in, in the fresh air somewhere. Okay, so let's take this back through round to where we are. Now what I will do is I will just use my pinking shears because this is a curved edge again and we want that to sit nicely. So I'm just going to take my pinking shears again and I'm just going to just avoid this neck edge a little bit here, probably snip into that a little bit just to give us a little bit to, to hold on to and then I'm just going to go round with the pinking shears and that will help this all sit better when we press it out. Don't get too close to your stitches. You don't want to pop any stitches. And just where the ears are, it's a little bit difficult. And then I'm just going to stop at that neck edge again and take that off with my snips. Because so I want the neck edge to be quite um, robust still so that we can sew with that, but I've just taken that edge off around and that should make it easier when we turn this out. So the next stage then that we need to do is we need to match up this section here under the nose. So we're going to match up that, that neck edge just there and pop a pin in. And then we're going to then just sew up there to that point just there. Okay, so we're going to just sew from this tailor's tack down to here and we are going to sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance because it doesn't say to use anything bigger than that. And if it doesn't say, we have to assume a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to sew from the nose edge right up close. Reverse. stitches on the neck edge to be quite strong so just be aware of that and that's what we should end up with so now it says that's a little curved edge too so I'm going to put a couple of snips in here just because that'll just hopefully help that to sit out properly okay so we've got to flatten off this nose so we've got the two Taylor's tacks at the bottom. So this is the cent this is the two side front bits. Look here. Okay, that's the forehead. And that's the two side bits here. And we need to pull these two seam allowances out of the way. And we need to sew flat across the top here. So across between there. Just pop that in the machine. Join the threads at the one of the tailor's tacks. Reverse stitch, cross, and then flat. Well, this isn't the easiest character to do, is it? So, we've got that sewn across now. So, now I'm going to turn it through. Same way, I'm going to take hold of one ear 
put my finger and thumb in, get hold of one ear and pull that through first. And that really does help to start the whole, whole system off of getting it turned through nice and neatly. That's the back of her head. And the curves out with our fingers. And then here we go to the front of her head. Okay, well that's, that's worked out quite nicely. So we've got her ears, a little bit of a Siamese look going on, but we'll we'll go with that. And then I'm going to take out, start and take out some of these pink threads. So they're my tailor's tax th threads that I can see. Start and pull some of these out. You've got a quick unpick to hand, you can just hoist them under. Sometimes they pull through. If they don't want to pull through, snip them off as close to the threads as you can get. And usually that'll make them hide. So I'm just going to take my time now and just take all of these tailors tacks out because we don't need those anymore. And then we'll work on the next bit. So if I just suggest you go and do the same. Just when you're checking everything through though, just make sure that all of the parts of the ears have been stitched down as well. Um, and that they're not any, you've not got any loose end, ends sort of poking out anywhere because if you have, you'll need to go back in again and just re-secure those down. Okay, let me come back to you when I've got all of these bits out. If you struggle pulling them out, as I say, just, just snip them off close to the, close to the edges um, and they should then pull through. Okay, back in. Okay, so this is what we've ended up with once all the tailor's tacks have come out. We've got a lovely square nose on the edge here and that was that last bit where we sewed across from the inside, of course. Her ears are sticking up, so that's good. We've got a nice rounded seam around the edges. The next stage now is to get our stuffing and to take in small bits of stuffing is just to push this in to the neck edge. Now these characters do take a bit more stuffing than you think they're going to and if your character is for a baby just remember you have to be careful of the stuffing that you use. So you need one that's CE verified but check the regulations in whatever country it is that you are living. This one isn't for a baby so I can stuff with just this polyfill that I've already got. And just make sure you get into all of those edges, all around where the ears are, all into the top of the head. And just keep stuffing, stuffing, stuffing. I quite like the nose as it is there actually, without actually having any extra bit on. But I'll carry on because I know that some of you will want to have the extra bits on. So let's just keep pushing all this in. As I say, just keep folding it out. Just try and get these side seams as smooth as you can do to give her a nice rounded look. So I do keep my neck edge sort of kind of like out at the moment so that I can get as much in. It's a good place to hold on to, but later we'll be pushing that in so that we can fix it onto the body. Now I haven't made my body yet because I was going to see how we get on with the head but I think I am going to machine my body anyway. And I think that this head would be fine for machine sewing for the majority of it. And on the neck piece, I'll be able to show you what I would do. Just make sure you're getting plenty of shape because she's got quite a flat face. And you want it to be quite nicely rounded. I do like my characters quite stiff as well, quite firm. To make sure you get that nose area nicely poked out and into the sides of the head. She's starting to come together now, isn't she? It's better. Top of the head needs a little bit more work, I think. If you're comfortable with stuffing your animals, then just, just fast forward on this bit. You, you probably don't need to see me stuffing an animal's head but sometimes it's amazing how much goes in and I think that's sometimes reassuring to see other people and how much they're putting in. Need plenty more down these sides and at the end of the dart to make a nice curve to the back of her head. 
and down into this section here. Let's have a little look and see how Clementine is looking now. So her ears are quite high. Look at this scene. I think she can still take some more. Pushing it all in using your thumb or whatever you want. Just to let you know as well, it did take me about 10 minutes to take all of those tailors tacks out as well. So well worth it to have a nice clean finish. Well, that's getting better, isn't it? A bit nicer. A bit more over this side, I think. Just keep pushing it in and... It's the stuffing that gives her the, the shape and it'll hold the shape as well even if this starts to settle and over the years because obviously your characters are going to be around for a lot of years so we want this to be nice and firm. Okay, she's coming together nicely now. So I think I've got enough felt in the um, stuffing in there for the moment. I might put some more in before we actually seal her up, but for now we're going to move on to doing this this neck um, this um, nose section here, and we'll see how that is. So let me just grab those pieces and I'll come back to you. But this is how she's looking at the moment. Okay, okay. So I've got this section here, and first thing I'm going to do is cut these snips. So there's two little notches, so I'm cutting those to the edge of where they asked to be not snipped to. And then we've got this centre front dotted line here. I'm going to just turn it around so the black of my marking is on the back. And then the centre of that needs to match along the centre line of her head. So make sure that's nice and equidistant. And then we're going to just, sorry Clementine, we're just going to pin that onto her nose. The next stage then this is going to come round here, isn't it? I'll just work this through with you. So that's going to sit on the front top of the head there. So bring the edges of the contrast piece around so they match up with the centre seam on the lower head. So that's here. Each head will be stuffed differently, so it might be that you need to overlap a little or trim a little. Hand sew the nuts. So that's going to go just onto there, I think. And they just sort of kind of meet up nicely. Hand sew the nose back a piece onto the main head around the edge using white thread. Sew the lower edge of the nose piece to one another and sew down the triangle piece to lay flat against the head. So then that piece then is just going to flat, flat, flatten there. Okay. So let's get some thread. Let's make sure we're not too high with that. So I'm not turned on the end of there. So I'm just lifting up these edges to make sure that the flat bit of the nose is sitting against the flat bit that's on the centre there. So yeah, I think that has moved down slightly lower, hasn't it? Just pop that back in so that can hold that still for me. And those sections there are going to come in together underneath there. And then that bit there is going to go over the top and lie flat. Okay, let's go for it. So let's just put the pin in just down here to hold that steady. Let's have another pin here to hold this steady. Okay, so I've got three pins in there and then this little bit here is loose. So let me now get my, I don't want it to be lopsided, do I? Let's get our white thread from out of our kit. That has been supplied to us. Apologies for the crinkling. We were given a need little needle as well to sew with, so let's use that one too. We've got plenty of white thread here, so let's unwind that from the bobbin.
just thread that needle, put my glasses on to do that. And I think I'm going to use a double thread, but I'm going to have to just be careful that I don't get any knots. So let's just do this. It's a nice little thin needle we've got, which is good. So I've got my knot at the end here. So I'm going to take it, just take that center piece off for a minute. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches under here just to anchor that thread down. Take off those ends because I don't need those. Because a couple of stitches here will make sure that knot doesn't then ever come out from her nose. And then now I can take a stitch in from underneath and come out roughly where her nose is going to attach the top of the head. Okay. So I'm going to take a little stitch through the felt. And now a little stitch in through the grey of the backing felt. Oh, watch her ear. This is going to be interesting. What kind of stitch does Sarah say to use on this? Um, over sew, she just says. So let's take a little stitch of the backing and come out into the felt. And then I'm making sure that my stitches are at right angles to the edge of the felt. And using my finger just to depress the felt slightly so that I can get in underneath it. Oh, your ears are getting in the way, Clementine. And then we're getting little stitches that are just holding this coloured felt piece on. Now, you might want to be a little bit more generous with the amount of white felt that you're catching if your doll is going to be dressed and undressed repeatedly. But mine, I don't think is. So I'm not gifting it to a child. So, so I'm just doing my stitches about a sixteenth of an inch apart from each other. Don't know if you can see those along there. Just want to make sure that that seam there is right. Move that down out of the way. So at each stage, oops, she's running away, look, is that I am just taking a little stitch of the, I'm travelling behind in, in the darker felt, taking quite a nice generous amount of that with my stitch, then depressing the nose with my finger and coming up out in, up into the white. Then wherever I'm coming up in the white, is where I then go straight across that point and then coming up in the white again. She wants to jump, doesn't she, all over the place? And it's just a matter of trying to get those stitches even and neat so that we can then keep that looking neat. So again, just really neat little stitches and I think that once these are kind of fluffed up a little bit, just run your finger over it, you can fluff up the felt a little bit and it'll hide those stitches. So again into the grey, out into the white. You can probably hear me concentrating. I just want this to be really nice and neat for you all. Okay. We seem to be doing okay. So let me carry on stitching this. And then once I've done this side, I'm then going to go across and do the other side. 
and I will come back to you because you don't need to see me or listen to me concentrating doing this now that I've sort of demonstrated to you hopefully how I'm doing that if you've got a better way for everybody who might in the future watch this video of how to stitch this down then please share that in the comments because we want everybody to get the best result and as I say this might not be the best way of doing it but hopefully it'll be neat enough for people to see okay so that's what I'm doing just on there and as I say if you just run your finger along the fluff after you've stitched it I think those stitches are disappearing even better into that into that felt so that you've not got a real obvious line just there so let me just carry on finish off this bit um, I'm probably going to just tack that down onto there and then I'm going to bring this piece over make sure it matches at the bottom and sew up and then I'll come back to you when we've got this little last little flap to sew so we can talk about that okay okay so this is what we've got at the moment we've got the sectional tied on and as I say if you just rub your finger over those stitches just loosens up some of the fibres of the felt and it just seems to just cover your stitches a little bit better so hopefully that's okay for everybody and then under here we're just going to pull this bit down and flatten that off because she is actually going to have a black nose added on to here so I've just folded that down I'm just going to put a few stitches to hold hold this flat just like this turn around and do the other side that should all be nice and fairly smooth then for her okay and that's what we've got now right so I've just checked and we've just not got on the nose just yet so let's just do a few stitches under here which is where I think the nose will eventually be stitched on to just then make sure that's all fine and then when you're ready then just put a stitch through and make sure that you don't lose your needle in your fabric in the center of your head just pull that through so it is a nice long tail is what I'm saying before you then stitch that down. So that's how Clementine's looking at the moment. So the next thing we need to do now is sew on the nose bit, the black nose bit, and also her eyes. So let's see if we can get those sorted. And I get those cut out, well, we've got those cut out already, haven't we? And we'll see how we can sort out to make those look, look good. Okay, this is a bit I'm nervous about, I think, is actually making sure that she looks cute. And some of them can look a little bit sinister, I think. So let's just have a look and see how we get on with that. Okay, so I've just been to my kit and I've got my no bit of black felt for my nose. I've got the two black buttons that we need to sew on for the eyes. I've got my thread and I've got my um, pattern piece for the eyes. Now, what I have noticed is that my pattern piece for the eyes seems to be a little bit bigger. So the pieces I've cut out for the eyes seem to be a little bit bigger than the pattern piece. So I'm going to trim those back using my snips because I don't want them to be bigger than they need to be. So we'll just trim those around a little bit. So just doing that. And then these are going to go on this way. So it's now about positioning these so that we can be happy that she looks as cute as possible. There's the other part, let's just do the other one. It's going to go that way, I think. Trim that one back a little bit. Got a bit carried away, I think, when I was cutting these out. And also, it's going to be important to get these round the right way because then, then they're not symmetrical. So I think that the little flick bit, the pointy bit, needs to go at the back. And I think that's what might help to make the little bit. That needs a white pin. Sorry, Clementine, for pinning into it. That's too low. Oh, that was quite cute. So it's now just, just a position, just a matter of trying to position these now to get these as cute as possible. 
that needs to be down further and closer. It's not looking too bad, is it? Because then if I get a black pin to pin the eye, the eye is then going to go towards the front and inside. Okay, that's not looking so bad. Where's my other eye gone? It's here. two pins in because they're tending to spin. Oh, she's not looking so bad, is she? I thought she might look a bit sinister, but she's not. <laughs> oh, I do have some funny ideas sometimes. Oh, I like that. That one's better. Right, let's move this one slightly. These, are, This just takes a little bit of fiddling about, folks, just to get her where you're happy with how she's looking. You know, I'm looking at, at how much white she's got around all of the eye. To make sure that that's nice i've got the little flick at the back and the rounded edge so when you look at your pattern piece there's a bit more of a rounded edge here i think and then a little bit of a flick there and i'm using the flick to go at the back that's quite cute so let's just do the nose now so i've got the little tri tiny tiny little triangle piece for the nose and i'm just going to put that onto a corner of the felt like that that should just go straight off the edge there at the corner. Let's just snip that straight across. Make sure that's nice and even. And then this is just going to go, I think, just underneath where we sewed down that white. So again, let me get some black pins. A little bit higher. So we're trying to get this even as well. Make sure that that's right. And the centre, the little point of the nose needs to match down with the bottom here with the centre centre front. Come on, pin, there you go. Oh, she's not straight, look. Slightly better. Oh, she's looking alright actually. Okay, we can we can carry on. I'm not creating a sinister cat. I'm pretty happy with that. Let me just get my seam gauge and let's just so to this point here, just over about half an inch there. So this is just making sure that it's as even as possible. So that's half an inch there, that's fine. And then the top of the flick, a little bit of thread there. So into the corner of the ear, to the back of the flick, is one point one and one eighth of an inch and from there to there one point one eighth of an inch okay i'm happy with that i just don't want it to look too cross patch i think that's the that's the thing you want it to look cute and not as if she's cross Maybe that just needs to be down like that better. That's better. As I say, it's just it's just now just just fiddling. Sorry if you if this is a bit boring for you, but I'm just trying to and that one's closer now. Just trying to see if I can get her to look look cute. So fiddle around with yours and make sure that you've got yours to where you, you're feeling that she's looking cute or sinister, whichever kind of cat you're wanting to do. Oh, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? A bit more even, hopefully. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch these on now. So I'm going to use the same stitch as I use for around the nose here. So travelling along behind the grey and then coming out and then doing a little stitch at a right angle onto the, um, onto the white and then just do that all the way round. Um, and then I'm then going, and then when I cast off, I'm going to do a couple of stitches in place, but then I'll um, take the threads through the inside again and out through the neck just to 
make that so that it's um, got a long thread on it and then I'm going to do the same stitch to sew the nose on as well and then that will hopefully get that looking nice too and then we'll have a finished Clementine's head. So let me just get on and do those bits and then I'll come back to you and show you how that looks. Okay, so I nearly jumped ahead without coming back to you. Um, as you can see, I've got this, the um, eyes sewn on and I've just rubbed my finger over those fibres just to fluff them up a bit, just to hide those stitches. Um, I think it just works quite nicely just to fluff that up and just to soften the edge really from when it was cut. So that's something that you could do with yours should you wish to. Um, the other thing I've done is I've threaded up a, a, the a medium sized um, black needle um, whether that'll be enough to go through it should be I think um, and then what I've done is I've gone in through the neck and I've come out in the center of the eye with my thread because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put um, a button on now I don't worry too much about the exact button placement obviously I want it to be ballpark and I've not got my threads tangled up I want it to be ballpark for putting this button on but I don't, I'm not going to get too hung up about its exact placement just first off because first off I just want to get them attached really so that they can't ping off on me. So I've got this one in and I'm just going to now just go through this eye and then I'm going to just squeeze the head slightly so that as you can see I can get through in towards the centre of the next one. So as so long as you're not going to see the stitch on the outside, I'm not worrying too much, sorry, outside the center of the black. And then I'm just going to go through this one again here. I might need some more thread. I probably haven't threaded enough on here, but it'll be enough just to attach them for me and I can add some more. So then once we've got that sorted, we can start to have a look at them. I know I want to be able to see white all the way around my eyes. Actually, that one's not bad, actually. I'm quite happy with that one. Um, and I want to be able to see the shape on the front so I think we'll be back again from here. So I've already gone through my eye. So I'm going to then, sorry, through my button. So I'm going to go back through again now. And now's the time that we want to watch for the end of the needle coming through. And then we're trying to position it so that it will actually come through on a button. Through a hole on the button. That's what I'm wanting without losing my thread on here. It's a bit of trial and error because you, you kind of work in blind. Um, you're trying to indent enough so that that was better so you can see the edge of the needle and then you're trying to get it into the right place so that you can come out through one of the holes on the button. It's not cooperating for me at the moment. Just keep trying. It's not the right hole, but that one is right. Okay, I've got it. So now I can hold on to that and just pull the thread through. And that's going to now secure that button on. And now I've got to decide whether I'm going to indent them slightly and pull them in a little bit. Yeah, I think that gives her a bit more shape, doesn't it? And I'm going to go back diagonally across on the other hole. That's that one. And now I'm trying to find the other side of this button that we haven't quite placed properly just yet. But I think is right there. That's it. A little, little pull. And then I'm going to go diagonally across again and see if we can hit the other side. Again. To be honest, I probably, next time I thread this, I'm going to thread a bigger needle. I should have used the bigger needle. Okay, that's right, one that's coming through. And then I'm going to pop this one through again on a diagonal. Make sure that button's going into the right place. And for now, I think I'm going to just take my thread through and then just snip it off because I think I'm going to use one of my longer doll needles. That one wasn't big enough. That was the medium size one. So I suppose I need to make sure that one will go through the holes. I don't think it will. Hold on one second. Let me get my bigger doll needles. Where did I put those? 
That's the only problem with moving your craft room around is you can't find what you need. Hold on one second. Okay, so this is what I was looking for, my other set of doll needles. Um, and these are quite a lot thinner than the ones in the kit. Yeah, that'll go through, I think. So let me get some more black thread. I'm using the one off the kit that was supplied. So this is a supplied. Get my words right. So she's coming together. I'm quite pleased with how she's looking. Doing quite a lot of thread here because it does, um, you do need quite a lot. When you've got this bridge of, of fabric, of um, space to go through, it does take quite a lot. So I'm taking off the rest of that. Thread it through. Nice big eye, so that should be fairly straightforward. And make sure this doesn't get knotted up. But of course it does. No, not there, that's fine, okay. So let's put these two ends together. Let's do a knot. And I'm going to go back up through the neck again to hide that knot because it's a nice big knot and it catches on the fibres of the stuffing and then it holds it in. So let's just put that through there your fingers crossed that it's going to go through the hole properly. Yes it does, that's good. She's looking okay isn't she? Don't just look boss eyed. Okay so I can go back through this hole now and then into this one. Much easier, much easier. See the longer the needle more control you've got for getting that angle right. So that's going in there, caught on her ear again. And then going through the other diagonal, through to the other side. No, no, I need to be further down than that one. Too far. So I can tell I'm hitting the back of the button. I'm just trying to get onto that. A bit further down. Okay, so we have eyes sewn on. I'm just covering up her nose with a thing because I have, have gone ahead and put her nose on. Now, I used the um, black felt. I did audition a pink felt nose. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've only ever seen cats with pink noses, really. And I, I, don't, I don't know which you prefer, but, I mean, that looks quite sweet. But in the end, I went, went with the black black felt nose anyway um, and rather than stitch that on what I actually did was I tried doing some needle felting it is my first time trying that um, and it depends I mean either you stitch it on the same way as you, you we stitch the eyes on sorry the 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 eye surround on not the white bit not the um, actual button um, or I've just place the black felt over and then use the felting needle like you'd use for Freya's spots um and just you just keep dabbing it in and because it's the fiber the the um felting needle's got some little burrs on the on the needle here and that just mats all the um fibers together it has slightly indented her nose but i think with a bit more stuffing in in there which i think i'm going to pop in, in when i've finished um i think that'll come back out again and i think it'll look quite sweet so that's how she's looking at the moment. Hopefully you approve. The only thing we've got left to do now is the whiskers. Now the whiskers are... Oh, let me go to the kit and make a bit of crinkling noise for a second. This is the whiskers here. Oops. This corded thread here, which is quite long. It's quite coarse as well, isn't it? See what you think anyway, but that's that's the um what is supposed to be used for the um for the whiskers. She only has three either side, I think. So let's just have a look and just see in the book and just see how Sarah says to attach these because um where are we, Clementine? Where are you? Where's your instructions? Using the thick cord and a tapestry needle, cut a piece of cord about six inches long, thread onto the needle and knot one end, 
Move the stuffing away from the felt and insert the needle up inside the head and bring out at one of the marked positions for whiskers. Pull through and repeat for the other whiskers if you wish to use a soft pencil to make a dark mark around the whisker position. So, with this, we're going to use this tapestry needle to thread through about six inches long. Just like that. Put a knot at one end. Doesn't really pull out. And then going up through the neck. So it's got the knot on the end of the of the thread. Well it's the this thread. And then at one of the three positions. Just pull through the through the cool, that's a long whisker, isn't it? Okay, let's do another one. That's probably why there's so much thread. That's for the three. I'm just cutting this thread now to the six inches and then I can trim. There's plenty of thread anyway in the kit, so that's fine. And there's three either side. So let's put a little knot on the end here. Like that. Thread this through the tapestry needle. And then find the next position. So it's like a figure three. So let's put that one through there. Let's do the next one. We're nearly there, folks. We're nearly finished her head. So then we'll talk, I'll talk about just briefly about a body because some of the parts are similar to other lunar parts like the arms I think are exactly the same as the lunar arms so you can follow my video on the lunar arms for doing her arms I am going to machine sew mine I think in fact I'm certain I am going to machine sew mine so that's those three whiskers there um, and the Body and the legs are different, so I will do new videos for those because they could become in handy. And also attaching the legs is slightly different as well. So I will do a video for those so that you'll be able to, to see what I mean with those. And there will be a video for attaching Clementine's head onto her body. So let's just make sure that's about even. So let's just pull through okay. As I say, they're quite long. But then cat's whiskers are long, aren't they, I suppose? But noodle felt noodle felting that nose on has worked quite nicely, I think. There's no stitches to kind of hide on that. Obviously, if you prefer the traditional way of just sewing yours on, then then please feel free to do so. All I do is give you a suggested way of doing things. And then we've got this last one to do and then we'll be all done. Move that pink felt out of the way. Then I'm going to tidy up. And then another day I will be doing her body and, as I say, her legs and showing you how to attach. The head I'll attach the same way as I do Luna anyway so you can Watch my video on that. There's nothing new or special about the way that I'm going to do that. Just trying to make sure I'm happy with where that's coming out. So, two sets of whiskers. There we go. So there she is. Whether they get snipped off or not, they may, do, may well do. I think they're a little bit longer at the moment. But that should that should do. So this little X section here, I'm, I think I'm going to put a little bit more stuffing in mine as well and just push that in and up because I think that's going to give her a nice rounded head. And as I say, I do like my characters to be quite well stuffed. 
but I think that she's turned out quite nicely. So I hope all the sponsors approve anyway. I hope you're happy with that. That bit will get tucked up into there when it gets sewn on and she's looking quite cute. So there we go, that's Clementine's head. Let me turn the camera up to you and um, I'll just say, we'll just do with the roundup. So I hope you've enjoyed stitching with me today. I hope you've enjoyed having a go at making Clementine's head. As I say, but just got to decide about those whiskers, whether I need those um, trimming off a bit. They do look quite long at the moment, don't they? And I am going to stuff her head a little bit more, although you probably won't be able to tell that on, on um, the screen at all that I've, I've been doing that. But I am going to do that too. Um, that, I'm going to wrap that up for today, just on the head. So if you struggled with the head before, hopefully I've made that a little bit easier for you. Um, hopefully I've not made it any more complicated. Um, it was a little bit of a tricky sew, but um, once... I'd worked out how to just tack those ears down again first, then I think that's worked quite nicely and she's got a nice shape to those. So once she's got a body, and then what I think I'm gonna be doing is the sailor dress for Clementine, because I've had a couple of requests for the sailor dress. Um, so I'm gonna do that, and then that she'll be all nicely dressed up in that for you. So thank you for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will speak to you soon. Take care, everybody. Happy stitching. Bye.